Blaze and crickets. We were long far gone from that. They're not going away, though. The crickets are with us. I think we got a good side, good, a good idea about that this week on a couple of topics. Uh, going through the news and, and social media and all this other stuff. It just shows that we're not really prepared. We're not capable. We think we might be, but we're not. There's lots of people who think they are woke. And I don't see it. I don't see it. I see a few that are, and those people are doing pretty good. And things are getting done. Maybe not to the way a lot of people expect that they should be done. But done nonetheless, and actually done in a more substantial way than I notice. Uh, keeps, well, is going on and keeps, the, keeps things going on and on and on and on instead of stopping things. And that seems to be the difference, is that you really stop looking at the, see lots of people looking at history and all this other thing, and it's important. But once you see what they've done and how they've done it or that they've done or that they didn't tell us true, you have to then look and see, well, they're still here, and so are we, and we're not in a position. We, we have no position on what we're doing, and yet we were supposed to be the ones in control. And that's the system that we've been put into. That's the system that we were born into. And I guess we can complain a lot, a lot enough, a lot, or we need to step up, because that's the way that part, that this reality is working working that way, and that's a pro the problem of the reality. We can discuss a whole lot of things, but the bottom line will be the bottom line, and in this case, it is the bottom line, literally the funds, follow the funds, we keep to, we're told about all these things, but there's a way in the method that they get, they get that way. There's a method behind why it gets to where it is. Actually, not one method, there's all kinds, and a lot of them, they just prey on our, you know, our frailties uh, as people. The people in the know and the psychopaths and the sociopaths know you don't want to do much. Uh, you just want to be left alone like anybody would. And that's the that becomes their, their playground. And so to stop, to, to stop the, the, the harms that come on us, we have to interject ourselves and put it, be the witness of the crime and stop the crime. E even petty crimes. Because little ones build, little crimes build into big ones. Someone somehow you, you feel like you get away with something, you continue to get away with things. I haven't quite figured out how that works. My focus has always been someplace else, but there's a whole bunch of the world that believes different than certainly than I would think going along. You know, go along to get along, don't harm anybody, do all the nice things to you, that, you, that you can. Try to aspire to what you thought you uh, you thought you for you want, wanted for yourself, and then you turn around and try to do that, and people get in the way. And so, I come along here in my 30, uh, 30 years or so now, more beyond past that, a couple decades looking at the problem, and I've come to some observations, and apparently a lot of people don't want to hear what I've found, even if it was just a body of evidence to put into, a, into their thinking, they just don't even want to hear it. And I think the part, part of the problem is I'm, I'm asking people to do something, literally do something. I mean, not just talk about it, not think, not make up stuff about what you're doing, but do it. And the problem is the crickets are where well, you don't do it right. So I'm asking people to actually have to work hard enough to figure out what to do right. How to do it right, er, I guess is better. You know, this week has been a pretty demanding on, on me trying to get, get stuff out uh, with uh, deadlines about something that affects uh, people. In a particular couple of things going on that when I suggest to people what the guide says we need to do, and I say that the guide is the statute that the, these people in seats of decision are supposed to follow, and that that I say supposed to because when they don't, that seat that statute is the objective basis by which they will be measured. And I say go there, put this down in your documentation to identify where the problem is. Don't leave it to an opinion. Don't, don't just come with your complaint and your 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 whining about something. Say they made a substantive violation of this thing which harmed you. And I find it amazing. Even after I tell people that, they don't do it. They go back to wanting to whine. They go back to an opinion base. And so we again, I just see so over and over and over again. We're we're kind of doing all this problem to ourselves. And anyway. Uh, 
hope I come once a week to, to offer up a whole lot. And a lot of you pick up a lot of this, and I appreciate that you do, and you're, you're applying it in your life. And, and you'll do it. You'll do that the way you will. I have, that's uh, that's fine. I don't have anything really to say about it. I can only say if you don't if you don't apply things correctly. But the more uh, you uh, incorrectly apply things, you're going to find those will be the the continuing things that will you know, keep popping up in your life. And I think the system is set up to ferret that out and keep on those points. In other words, when you keep ans- asking questions and getting the answers you don't like and you, they keep giving you answers, you haven't solved it because when you come to the point when you've given them the thing they can't answer, that until you come to the thing that you've given them that they can't answer, you, you, you're you giving them, you're handing them the question, whoever it is, to continue to uh, ha- hassle, with, hassle with you. And as I was talking, uh, this, or, I mean, what was uh, provided an email, uh, excuse me, a video of uh, Wayne Hage Jr. and his condition. I talked to you about the, the, the uh, appellate court case that he was in. I watched that. I told you my opinions on that, and it was opinion because this is just a matter of he has to decide. I could only hope that he would do what I see. Well, it now comes out that uh, he interprets what he sees as what I was suggesting that he needed to do. Not that I'm right, but that I'm telling you that there's a certain way to go about this. And until he finds that, he's going to be harassed, and I think now he's on to it. I'm real pleased for him to see that. I hope now he executes on that point. And it's what I've been, all these things are what I've been telling you about. So, he gets harassed and harassed for decades until he finally figures it out. Until someone finally gets so embarrassed about how bad it is. He's been stripped to the bone, literally. And he had all the rights. And he's still stripped to the bone by the system. And even the system got embarrassed. Now, I told you, look at that, because that's where all of us are. And until you put yourself in there and realize that's where you have to go. You have to go to the place where you have nothing else to lose. And you then you press the one step further. Unless you can do that, we're going to see the problem that we see. We're going to see people taking advantage. We're going to be, be played like a fiddle. Like this last week. Someone was certainly trying to beat the devil the way the fiddling was going on in, in this last week's news. But uh, before I get to that, I wanted to bring up a comment that hit the uh, the podcast page, I think it was, uh, from Eduardo asking a couple of questions, and I'll just hit those about the archives. Uh, the archives uh, only can last so long. There's almost so much space, and so Grimner has to pull out some. And so I, I don't uh, know what to say about some of the blogcasters don't have links because they're older, and there's no space in the archive. This is all done on a shoestring. So if there's not enough donations to go and keep uh, the hardware up and enough we have Grimner has to make room. In fact, uh, there was a little thing we went on and did. We actually compressed the files even more to make more files stay longer. I think that's what the theory was. So our files are even compressed even further. And so we try to keep it right above the the limit where it's uh, audio, the audio is good enough that it doesn't have too many artifacts in. And that's partly why I send up to the Spreaker account a double a double account file. So in case you have a problem, you can get a little bit better better sound out of that one. And I have to apologize a bit. I've been having trouble with my audio. I hope it's okay today. I don't know. We'll find out later that um, I had a program that almost took my system out, and I was able to salvage it. Uh, so I'm working with the trying to reproduce and uh, regain the, the quality here of the, the signal. But anyway, going on to the questions. So the archives, I suppose we can get a, if you had a special request on what you wanted, I don't know. I might be able to link them back up and put those ones that you want uh, into the blogcaster again. You'd have to ask Grimner exactly about that and to do it. Do it. Uh, then the other question was an interesting thing. I've tried to do this, and I don't tend to have much luck at moving myself forward or getting things. It took quite a long time to even get on the Internet. There wasn't many people that would accept uh, getting on the Internet for myself as a broadcast. And then I finally found my place, and then I stayed there for about a year or so. I can't remember now the time. The time is about maybe three years. I don't even remember. And then I moved over to Oracle Broadcasting and then moved over to here. And uh, at the, early on, it was uh, kind of interesting to listen that there was uh, options to go into shortwave. And the question is here, why don't I do, why don't I get on a shortwave broadcast? Well, I've tried, but there's, uh, early on, you could get on, uh, but, well, if you had access. And uh, no one would accept the broadcast. So that's been an ongoing problem. Uh, the other thing is I don't have any, uh, 
I talk when I say I live in austerity, I do. I don't have anything extra. I only live on what's uh, provided is uh, maybe donations and what I could dig up. So what I can save along and all this other stuff. So I don't have any extra money now where you have to buy the time on, on the uh, internet. So this is what I was hoping the blockchain might be able to help out. I could have a pool of, if anybody was interested, put a pool of stuff that I could use from there to go maybe purchase these kinds of things. But shortwave has been an interesting thought for myself uh, to do because it seemed like a lot of people were there, but I don't have the access. The networks I've tried to get onto that happen to have shortwave don't want my content. And what I, I say that way because when I ask them, or when other people have asked them, in fact, a couple people have tried to ask other networks to put me on that do have shortwave, they won't answer back why or that they don't want to take the broadcast. And so thank you for wanting to get the word out. I would love to get everywhere, wherever it is, and shortwave would be kind of interesting. I don't really know much more about it than it's just a, it's a conduit for getting the information out. If people are, that's where people are, then we need to get the word there. If you have any more information about how I can get into that, uh, that'd be great. I'd appreciate to, to know more about that. But it, it, it takes a little more than what I have to, to bear to wherewithal that I can pr produce for doing all that stuff. So as I, I mean, I can't even get people to share and like and do the basics, let alone going on and get onto another network. A couple of networks that would take me on, uh, the, they don't know that they had shortwave, but uh, they wanted me to go every day. The, again, this is interesting. They either don't like me or they want me on every day, and that was just too demanding for what I'm actually what I'm doing. In other words, I really do stuff that takes a lot of time to do during the week, and this is the time slot that I've found I can devote. Actually, the time it's the whole day and the night before, uh, the time I can devote to to take away to do this thing that I try to tell you every week. So, again, shortwave would be cool, I guess. Uh, just another conduit. I don't have access to it. I don't tend to be able to pull together the people I need that would advance that. A few people have help, and a few people do help, but not enough, apparently, to to make a big deal. And I appreciate that you understand that, that apparently the shortwave, and he references here, Bill Cooper understood the, 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 um, the, the, the power of a shortwave connection. So it's not that I haven't tried, it's just that I, when I've tried, it hasn't come about. And um, and I guess, and you say, but when you say Bill Cooper, and looking out, I was looking, my, in the past, I was looking at people who did, who seemed to be pretty popular in those, in any market area, if you will, if I can call it a market, and uh, tried to enter into those things. And it just hasn't been a very good, a simple request hasn't been enough. And maybe multiple requests haven't been enough. So I don't have the, I don't have the uh, persuasion power, I suppose. Uh, nor do I have any monetary clout at all to uh, pick up these things. Uh, I appreciate the interest. I would be interested to go and have any conduit open for the information. And I'd also like feedback on to how to best communicate through these conduits, because I just make this stuff up as I go, I guess as anybody does. But uh, it's not its not like a learned process here. I'm just giving here. I come and I give you information. Give, and I hope that you put it together and use it. I, I think that the people that have find merit in what I say. And again, getting back to the conduits, any number of conduits would be fine. I've got a, I had a couple, but I haven't gotten any communication. I have terrestrial broadcasters that pick this broadcast up, and they're small, but they do pick it up. They get the file that I give, and that's another reason why I do the higher higher quality file on Spreaker, uh, is that they will take the file, as I understand it, and they'll broadcast it during the week. So. Again, thank you for the, the comments and the questions. And then there was another question that Eduardo put out. It says that he had found some files on Oracle, but they were in a torrent, apparently. That's news to me. So I may get back to to Eduardo and find out how he found the torrent, because I didn't realize there was any broadcasts in the Oracle listing. They, uh, Doug took them all out, uh, given, again, it was costing him quite a bit of money a month to hold the storage. So that's the problem. Again, the storage costs money. And when Oracle went down, he let the archive stay up for a while and then cut them out. So this is just the logistics of handle, ha how to handle a network. This is the logistics of the of how to ha handle data and over time. And these these uh, this information goes away at some point, except for places like archive.org, which may be another thing, and I just don't have the time to go there to dump everything there. Uh, then uh, that might be interesting and hope that they last. The, the information that we pass is kind of a temp temporary type of thing, unless it's like you find out in the seeding, which I found interesting. I didn't realize people were seeding the, the broadcast and it's still going on. So I don't know how you'd find it. But 
Anyway, thank you for the comments on, on the podcast page. And any of you that have them, we, we, I get them. They come to me as a, just a notice that you, you answered and um, that uh, I finally get to it. Uh, when I finally can see it, I can get to it. And so thank you, Eduardo, for that. And I hope Joyce got her, her answers here a couple weeks ago. And so it's um, just an ongoing process of communication. And I'm just, again, hoping that people utilize this information. I'm just not, the things that I try to offer here are an insight. And they're an actionable insight. And the again, like, you know, people are dealing now with the rollout of the of the uh, smart meters. They really need to start listening better on what they need to do. They're not really going to the point. In fact, I'm seeing people put actions into count. I just saw one. Uh, it was an ordinance that see people wanted to make to, to not uh, to, to not require an, uh, the uh, fee uh, for the meters or something, and, and that's that's already been, I already had a, a colleague of mine already submitted a letter, hit him in the administrative side, and the power company came right back, it wasn't even within, within a week of that letter going in, and they pulled back one of the things about a smart meter, so we have the remaining provision of the fee for reading the meter that's an analog, so this is not going to be a simple, just a one letter answer, lots of people have to be doing a better thing. The letters I've been watching, uh, most people send aren't going to hit this thing in the due process side, on the administrative procedure side, and I think that's going to be uh, that's going to lose in the long run. This is a, when I suggest to you about the administrative procedures and the method that's used to interfere with your law, your life, and your law and your your property. Uh, this is a, not an opinion. If you look very carefully. They're going through the alternative dispute resolution processes through the Administrative Procedures Act in order to defeat you all. And so you, you have to address that before you even get to the minutia of the little facts and things that they use to support their point. And here we have on our, one of my first tabs here is the new FCC ruling gives federal government control of 5G rollout is exactly what I told you last week about or the week before, the week before that, whenever it was, I've been in a couple of stories and talking about local jurisdictions wanting to control 5G. Not the smart meter, but the connect, the network that they're going to con- uh, hook up to. I said it's going to be considered, it's a transportation situation, and that's in the exclusive domain of Congress, and the FCC is the agency for that, on the executive branch side. And they're they're going to make. I said I I said I questioned the 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 continuance uh, continuing authority. I said it might be a great stopgap. It wasn't even a week. Here it is, folks. On Monday, October first, Sacramento, Houston, and Annapolis, Los Angeles became the first cities to gain access to five Verizon's 5G wireless service. They're already rolling it out. The city of Sacramento has become a focus uh, of the Verizon's nationwide expansion of 5G or the fifth generation cellular technology. So it's already happening, and uh, we're talking about a story where the federal government's already advancing it. Well, a lot of this is all advanced through the funding of the federal government. So federal funds, for those of you that understand and have been reading, whoever used federal funds, federal law, it prevails. It, it, over, it trumps everything. If you take somebody's money, you have, to fu- you have to go by their rules. The rollout of 5G is expected to herald the beginning of the smart cities. What have we been talking about over and over? Not as a concept or a little thing, oh, just an opinion. Smart cities are the implementation of sustainable development. The Bar Association has committed to promote sustainable development. It's a foreign concept imposed upon your countries. That's right out of their documents. I don't even have to work hard. And so you have to understand this, the lineage of this before you can start addressing it. And this is coming from a, a, a foreign source. And so it takes a different a thought about how this works out. The rollout is expected to herald this beginning of smart cities. That's sustainable development by definition. If anybody denies any of this stuff, you're missing the whole point. You're arguing with yourself. You're making a division, the same division that caused a caused someone that uh, caused a Supreme Court justice to come in that started your that helped author or promote the same system of oppression that you live under today that caused all this and the need the professed need for it. All. See, we're missing it. We're missing the big time play. Pretty fascinating to watch everyone miss it. The smart cities were driverless cars, pollution sensors, and cell phones, traffic lights, and thousands of other devices interact in what is known as the Internet of Things. 
who started that? But who was that? The, the statement we started to hear that the most promoted one, but Rumsfeld, wasn't it? I think in the uh, DoD military. It was the first less the first thing in the list after smart cities was driverless cars. If you go look at the purpose for 5G, one of the 50% of the capacity is for autonomous car communication. I've talked about this. I've rolled this out for you. I'm talking about a rollout of 5G, and I've been rolling out the response that you need all de need to be given. And instead of arguing with me or arguing with yourselves or whatever you're not doing, you need to be able to do this, respond to this, I if it means anything. I suppose if nothing means anything, there's who cares, right? But you're listening for a reason. Something's bugging you. Something ain't right. I would hope. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's a. Maybe I'm looking at this thing all wrong. Maybe everyone loves to waste their time, and that's all I keep walking, walk, looking, and interacting with a bunch of people that want to waste their time. The move toward a smart grid. Remember, smart's not so intelligent, but it's smart. It'll smart all right behind woodshed. The move on towards a smart grid was hastened last week when the F F Federal Communications Commission approved a rule. A rule. So that had to have a process, folks. That, that will limit the role of local authorities regarding the build of 5G networks, specifically the amount city officials can charge telecommunications pro companies. How many times am I going to tell you this is about the bottom line as well? Understand the charging of this is also charging uh, behind the scenes since the federal government's using grants and funding, the grant stream funding to put in this this uh, foreign agenda, this concept. Uh, it's gonna you you can't go after their money. Of course, they're going to limit the bottom line. The first thing wasn't your health, was it? No, it's the bottom line. It seems to be that follow the money is an interesting thing, but no one understands, understands exactly how to follow the money. And I started to see it in 2003 when we were sitting there watching thousands of bills come through to us, a state legislature that I finally realized after looking at them all, I just start watching, it's really just too much to keep up with, but I was... I didn't blink, folks, and after some time, your your eyes pick up. What you see picks up and makes sense, starts to make sense of things. And I realized how they were doing this to us was to throw so many bills through that were the p smaller parts and pieces of bigger of bigger functions. And those that were writing the bills, and they used the university system to write the bills, all the law, so-called law students, give them a task, it was their, their, their college credit, to write a bill on a certain topic, throw it, put it through the legislature, it goes through the machinations of the system, and then it, it filters through all the committees and comes through and gets voted on, and little pieces and parts get voted on. They all look pretty good on their own by themselves, and what I started to realize is that all these pieces and parts started to interrelate. Part of it was finally, and always looking for the follow the money part, the leverage funding. You see it, you finally find it. You look long enough. And so what they do is they put these bills in behind the system, in the legislature, and uh, there's thousands of them. And then they build, the people on the inside know what to do with these parts and pieces on how to put them together. And this is how this is advanced. This is a part of the method that we identified that we sued to enjoin. That the greater system is not going to want to recognize it all and did everything it could to try and obfuscate uh, the law. And so the law still sits there, but no, people need, uh, people need better proofs than, than the facts that they see uh, the law being violated to stop things of the matter of law, like a default judgment to be binding. And so our, our progress is a lot slower than it ought to be if we were in a society of people that knew the law, instead of trying to deny it or redefine it. And one of the factors is how these federal agencies come through. The, the EPA is how we saw it. We go through the Grand Street funding of the EPA. That is the member. We read, I, read it, but I read it to you behind the woodshed. It's not un, all unfamiliar to you. The EPA is the promoter of one of a one pillar of the sustainable development, the environmental pillar. Do you think that they're going to be counter to the environmental uh, in interference if it's going to diminish the capacity for them to put this thing in? And so when you start seeing, I hope you start seeing it from that way, and then you have to start dealing with it differently. This has really been put together pretty brilliant. But uh, so federal funds, federal federal law is going to have to follow. The commerce of transportation of information and uh, these communication lines are all federal because that's the Constitution says so. And so they're using the system brilliantly, and you and you aren't. And that's partly how they're doing this. And then they have their whole other thing going on. But it doesn't matter if you're not interested. You're interested. I, mean, I know you're interested, a lot of you. But uh, you're kind of still twiddling your thumbs over what you think you have to do. And I'm trying to give you 
the answers on how to start, at least get into a gauge part of this. So smart meters, a one letter went in and we were able to truncate the, 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 one of the problems that the, 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 the com power company was done. But we can't uh, yet address the 5G, but we're, now we're encroaching upon their ability to use the smart meter and therefore one less capacity, although smart meter is not one of the purposes for, for the 5G. It's, uh, it's cars. We haven't gone to have a car yet, but, but we're going to put a system into it to be able to adopt to it. Anyway, so the I, I, what I, I'm enough here. The five, the federal government has just put a rule a week after I told you that it was the local decision will be a stopgap over 5G, not the smart meter. Smart meter can be stopped because of the failure of the APA to implement it in the state. The 5G can't necessarily be stopped that way. It has to be stopped in a different way. So don't don't commingle these points. But, but again, looking at looking at the dynamic, it's possible to do something in one regard, but you can't use the same tactic in another. And then you have these overarching authorities that have to be dealt with. Now, in process of doing that in the administrative uh, build-up to court cases and or challenges, you, administrative challenges or whatever you want to do with the government in action and keeping a check on it, and a lot of this public awareness and rec public records was to keep an open government, what they call transparent now, which is a, really a fraud against you, but because not, the transparency is their, the tra what's transparent to you is how they're taking advantage of you. you know, that an open uh, government was, was hoped for when this open records condition, uh, but they've also made lots of ways to obstruct, but when you start learning more about the system, and if we all came together with the little tricks we've learned, we'd probably do things a lot quicker too. Again, we have to re reintegrate with each other in the proper way, not the one that they're trying to do, but the way we can work and aid each other in what we know. This little article about how you get information in order to find the evidence to go after some of this thing to do what you do is called uh, the Freedom of Information Act at the federal level, or it's your open records request at the state level. The Indiana Jones Warehouse, how to use FOIA to get documents from purgatory. How did you even know there was do document purgatory? Well. This is an interesting story for those of you that are doing FOIAs that, that can't get past a certain spot. This offers some in insight as to what you're dealing with. I thought it was uh, pretty important, and it also offers how to go about putting in the things and requests. As I tell you, here, uh, here, if you put a certain thing in that you need to say, then you can you you qualify one of the elements of quali of that, and you don't have to say any more. It's a certain way. If you go read the statutes, they tell you what to say. Don't negate it. Don't make your own opinion over the top of it. Just do what, what they're suggesting that they need to have in order to make something work. Well, as documents age, the likelihood that, that they will be released to FOIA requesters should increase. But because of a quirk of the U.S. record-keeping system, this is often not the case. Usually when someone request, requests a historic document defined as older than 25 years from an agency, the agency FOIA shop will state, that it only deals with modern records and has no quote, found quote no responsive records, and is closing the FOIA case, the FOI request. Sometimes the agency will include language kindly suggesting that you conduct your search at the U.S. National Archives or NARA, but often the records are are not at the NRA either. And so now you see the nesting of the problem, how things get done. And if you don't know this and you try to do things, you're going to be stymieing at every turn. Why this, this is very important for anybody that's going to do any kind of record request for the federal government in understanding what's going on here. NARA, NARA NARA is, uh, is up to front in stating that only 2 to 5% of all the federal records are deemed, quote, permanently valuable historical records, close quote, and preserved for researchers at the archives. What's interesting is, is the word archive. If I remember right, a long time ago I read the word archive is like dead letter anyway. It's like uh, it, it's a purgatory of its own for records. And so, in some regard, when you read that, you start seeing that there's nothing that's any nothing via valid is anything older than 25 years by the statutory one, which would kind of confuse confuse you a little bit. How can that be? But also explain what we're up against regarding these old records how to get them, this article said, but what is uh, less clear about it is that there is decades-long lag time between when the permanent historic record moves from the agencies to the NARA and that the key historic document can go to a records purgatory during these decades. 
if requesters do not know this, about this purgatory, the Washington Record Center, another, another repository, and the special steps needed to request forms from it, they probably will be unsuccessful in many of the FOIA requests for records from the 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s. I almost can't believe I'm reading those numbers. They're already old records, and I'm like looking at the... I lived through those times. In many respects, the Washington Records Center, WRC, is the real-life U.S. government equivalent to the warehouse where the Ark of the Covenant is stored, never to be found again at the end of the Indiana Jones film, The Raiders of the Lost Ark. The Washington Records Center is located in a heavily guarded federal office park in Sweetland, Maryland, encompassing 789,000 feet and has a capacity to hold over 3.9 million cubic feet of federal records. What a dumpster fire, folks. Key, key government documents are stored in the difficult-to-access location, and the public, including many FOIA experts, don't, don't even know this exists. So the, the article continues to go. I think if any of you that are doing this, and for, even for records requests, I wonder how much of this relates over to the state. You have to go look very carefully. They're looking right in the statutes. They actually have some some screenshots of uh, or images of the statutes they're reading from, so you too can read them. And they explain this process. They also get to the bottom at the, of this uh, discussion, and they talk about you know, what to put on the on the form in order to help get to the proper archival uh, center. And what they said at the end, and I won't read any more. You can go read it for yourself. And this is, again, not just something you quote from me when I say it here, but go read why. And this is what I, these are the types of things I would tell people to do FOIAs. There's like three things you need to say on FOIAs. They're just a sentence. They tell you to say them, and if you don't say them, then you can run, your, run into problems. You can avoid uh, paying fees because of uh, a proper sentence that you put in uh, for doing so. It depends on the purpose of for why you're requesting it. And so you need to know what that is and put that part down if you want to avoid the fees. But this one, for this point, about Getting directing your request to the proper place, in particular for our, our archival documents that are older than 25 or so years, uh, and then and then there's another uh, uh, problem with the agency. You have to go through the agency to do this too, because that's where the hiccup is and the disconnection. You'll find out in the article. It says you put down in your FOIAs, your MDRs and appeals, uh, quote, as you know, your agency is required to search the records stored at the NARA Washington Records Center in Sweetland, Maryland. Uh, but still technically under your agency's control. For more information, see 36 CFR 1250.8. And so there's, again, a little statement that someone who has uh, done this, run up against the wall, has worked his way, their, their way through to solve. The kind of thing I'm telling you when you learn the battlefield is something you'll have to do. And once you know this, it's just in your it's just in your bag of tricks. It's like you. I take certain things, I just dump them in a letter. I don't. I just have a, I just know they have to go into the letter for the purpose. Certainly not every letter, just for the purpose. And I'll dump these little statements in that, uh, again, qualified for the purpose, particular purpose, are what I still need to do. And so it becomes pretty quick when you start uh, assembling the knowledge that you need to do the things you need to do to help you. And so I found that to be very, very important. So, so here you are. You get all your documents, and and you get and you learn this way, and you can get in your documents things and. You figure out how you don't have to go down and knock on the doors and be part of all this thing you know, like they want you to do to waste a lot of your time. Uh, but they make the, the, the records available. So you get your copies or you did, did you did you need reduce them to digital. You put them in your computer. And uh, then you got to go do a Microsoft update. And next thing you know after the update, all your documents are gone. It's a real world problem. So what I'm going to say right up front, and I again, when I my system about went down here about two weeks ago, uh, boy, oh, boy, you're... It's, it's, fr it's kind of frantic. You want to make sure that you have your backups done. I don't even like the idea because it means if it, my whole system fails, I'm going to have to reload all that. And I don't, I've never done the reload part. I just keep saving. So save your backups on your documents because if you only have Windows 10, and I'm going to offer you an insight, but it may not be an answer to this, but consider, the, consider something here in a moment. Microsoft's latest Windows 10 update that happened here just, I think, a week ago, once it got done, disappeared everybody's uh, do documents. I, mean, I guess whether they're pictures or whatever they all have. I'll have a link for for this point. But what I wanted to offer, the only reason why I was kind of interested in it uh, is when I, what happened to me wasn't for Windows 10. But when I had to restore the, the system, 
because it had a boot problem that I just could not solve and I was running out of time. Again, you run out of options as well. When my system came back, it wasn't quite right. In fact, the scariest thing was later, after I'd kind of settled down with getting the system a whole lot more stable, I noticed all my documents were gone. So you get that little cold sweat that goes over you. Okay, what am I going to do? But I've learned to just be calm and keep looking. Don't blink. Let's look around. Well, it just so happens, and I won't advance this to anybody. It may not solve your Windows 10 problem, but before you panic, maybe go look for this. As I opened up my word processing program, and I went to recent documents, and I opened up from there, from my document my word processor, I opened up a document that I had opened up before. Now, the computer is showing there's no, no, there's no files, but I opened it up from there, and a file opened, which means it's, it was in the computer somewhere. I just couldn't see it. I couldn't find it. I never did find it. What I then did is, I to find this, again, just this is a Windows 7 system I did this on after a restore, not an update. This may not, be involved, this may not fix anything at all for a Windows 10 update that actually stole your documents, but you might want to check. Open up your word processor, open up a recent documents, and see if your, prog your, your, files op your file opens up. You might want to do maybe do in the picture viewer or something else as well, but in the documents is how I did it. I went in and found that it did open the document, which means the file was there. It just wasn't, re it wasn't recording. In fact, the document folder asked me to put something in it. It was empty. And so in a, you know, in a partial panic, if you will, just looking at what am I going to do with my documents, I could find that there was a data for the old document. The only question was, where was it getting it? So I think what I did is I found a way to find the properties. I found a link within the properties of that document in order to go to that space. I just went to computer, and I went to manage, I think, or something, and I opened up a, uh, it opened up a, brow a window, or the, browser, the, the Explorer window, and in the top in that location, I dumped that address. And that address went to somewhere. I took off the document, and that address went to a folder. I then opened up the folder area and found that all my documents were there. Then all I did is I copied those folders back into the document folder that said I had nothing. Now, there might be a way to register this differently than, than what I know, but that's so for those of you that have a problem when your documents disappear, go look in, in, your, in your word processor program to see if they're still accessible. And if they did, and they are, then it's possible the computer just forgot where they were. And so this is a serious problem. You get all your documents in your FOIA, you got all your evidence, and all of a sudden well, Microsoft steals them from you. It's not a good feeling at all. So the main uh, issue here is always back up your stuff. I can't say I do that uh, timely enough, but I do it. Uh, in fact, I certainly was able to get it done again here to make sure. And I, didn't, I ended up not losing my documents. They were there. That the computer just wasn't recognizing where. So the reason why we are checking and checking the government because it's a typically reasoned in, in an over long time that it's probably not a good good thing and it has to be does have to have a check and balance about things and records requests are important. Uh, the officers uh, of that agency uh, that the government uh, tend to want to get a little bit bigger for their britches than what they ought to. Uh, they set up systems that are not not so not so smooth. And that's the inefficiencies of government. I go big systems. Can you imagine a warehouse, 789,000 square feet, 3.9 million cubic feet of, of dumpster fire storage? I mean, I just can't even imagine. What a, what a phenomenal uh, position. And to think about the keep records and make books provision to your tax code and everything, the Federal Register, why you even have a Federal, federal Register. Everything's re reduced to writing in this country. That was supposed to be one of the reasons why it works better. In other words, there's evidence of everything that gets done. And then you have these officers that are implementing all this stuff. And we're supposed to have a check and balance for that. And when it gets to the people implementing, we seem to have dropped the ball somewhere. And uh, when we look in the history and we start seeing how the history of this thing comes down, notwithstanding whatever all our opinions, those records still be generated. Uh, and there's still this process of an organizational structure. And people move in and people move out. And people have authorities. And people implement those authorities, and they do them with different uh, grades of protection. My research and my study provides to me a highly probability, high probability of, of, of existence 
of something of a military consequence, a martial law, if you will, the failure of cessation of the Civil War. The occupied country called the United States of America. And uh, they have officers that are, look like police officers. And I'm going to go, hopefully go through one of these uh, positions here as we go through with these officers uh, and what's going on as to why this, this condition is the way it is. But I told you that in this condition, there's a, uh, if you go to the Libra Code, you see there's a very high tolerance for uh, indiscretions against the people that are being occupied. And it's only when that, that indiscretion rides up high enough that it's not actually justifiable to the people generally will be when you're going to see one of these, these official, these officers are going to be convicted. And that happened. Very often, not very often does it happen, but someone, a police officer, was convicted in a murder of a slaying of Laquana, Laquan McDonald. Now, the thing that caught me in this story, because I'm really not interested in these stories, is they're getting away with murder. This one didn't get away with murder, but what I found interesting really was seemingly, to me, Con, uh, conclusive again of the condition that you live in relative to the Libra Code saying that the security of the oppressor, the occupier, is paramount. And only for the hein most heinous actions are actionable uh, against the, its soldiers. That even a jury agreed with that standard here. The Chicago poli police officer was also found guilty of 16 counts of aggregated bur uh, battery and not guilty of official misconduct was what caught my mind right there. The Chicago police officer was also found guilty of 16 counts of aggregated battery and not guilty of official misconduct. What have I said? It's not a misconduct for a soldier to defend the, the state. The action may be in excess, and he can be found liable, but his official conduct is validated. He can uh, brutalize you, and it's not official misconduct. Was an I thought an interesting interpretation of a, of a jury. Now looking over, this is I talk about the the captives agreeing with their captor. So sixteen counts of aggregated battery on on somebody for shooting sixteen bullets into someone who was incapacitated notwithstanding his felony status at the time, was not official misconduct. It was a crime, but it wasn't official misconduct. Yeah, I hope you understand this, the, the subtlety of these things. Uh, just cap Those little sentences just kind of capture me up. I look at that and I say, you know, what world am I living in that that would be, how is that not official misconduct? And yet it, a jury agreed it's not. Being brutalized is not an official misconduct. It's just the course of business, isn't it, in an occupied territory. Otherwise, otherwise, I think we would, being that we enjoyed a country that was a, what we were told, that wouldn't be the case. We would have better accountability. And so, in seeking accountability and getting moving more into what I was talking about earlier in the broadcast about being persuaded into uh, taking sides and looking at the wrong things and being told certain things and missing certain things as I pointed out here just uh, you know we can get it well we go after the officer got convicted but we missed the fact that every other officer was just told you they can aggravated they can commit aggravated uh, battery on you and, and it, it's not all official misconduct in other words if they can hold it down to where it's justified if they can justify it Plug in, plug in a, 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 an incapacitated body 16 times apparently is not justifiable. What if they can justify it? Then 16 uh, aggravated counts, uh, ba aggravated battery is not of, not official misconduct. And this is what I've been telling you about this condition. But so we're looking. Everyone looks the uh, is led by the nose and whatever they're led by. Whatever makes it it's important to each other uh, is is what guides them along their our perceptions. And what's been kind of going along in this uh, Trump thing going into the officials, another officer in this big government thing that's going on. And uh, I really don't understand lots of it. I try to stay away from it. But there's certain things that pop up in the notice about what's going on uh, that I find interesting to a degree. Uh, only, I guess, in, as an instruction to keep tabs of what, what things are going on, what people will believe, what they will pick up, what they will miss. 
uh, came in through Cynthia McKinney's uh, Twitter. It was a, the word bombshell. And we've, I've made a broadcast about bombshell. And not no criticism of her. People respond to that. What I found, though, is uh, the story was the Russian collusion bombshell. DNC lawyers met with the FBI prior to this whole... The Democratic Party lawyers met with the FBI over before the, the Donald Trump Russian collusion thing before the election. So... That's a bombshell, I suppose. It, it almost anymore seems to be like just a, just the due course of business in this country anymore. No one really settles down to start going after the right things. That the FBI is supposed to, you know, I mean, they're so tarnished. If they ever had a, a shiny badge, I don't see how they can have any I, I, any shine at all. The congressional, uh, with what they've been doing. Remember, and I, I guess the thing is, uh, my memory keeps jumping back around. Remember, we were told in the 1993. Twin Towers trial for the bombing that happened. There was a, uh, a plan issued by, uh, given, but like the FBI does, to the terrorists in 1987 that pr- broached the idea of using airplanes uh, to take them down. Instead, the people chose to try and bomb the foundation. And so we were given more. We were given the heads up that the government was already helping the bon- the the FBI was helping terrorists, right? So to me, that's that pretty well. That they threw that. The, they were thrown into the into the the dumpster here pretty quick from my standpoint. I don't give much of this much any credit. And then, as I told you before, our our uh, mining district, our Jefferson Mining District chairman, was essentially attacked when we the the assembly through his letter uh, charged uh, actually did a, didn't charge anybody showed uh, demanded to show cause how the Secretary of Interior hadn't committed felonies and treason. And just on that request. The chairman was attacked by by the FBI. Now nothing ended up coming of it because he had the right answers. Again, the word in his mouth. He understood the condition. Uh, he's not a pushover and didn't get belligerent at all. But I'm saying he's not a pushover in the knowledge. No, it doesn't take uh, takes a, uh, minimal. I mean, uh, improper suggestions from a so-called authority very well and was able to hold his own. And nothing else came of it. The point was ju- accountability didn't happen within the government by officials that sit there to protect. So that the FBI has been doing this and does this kind of stuff is not surprising. I don't even know why this is any news for being a bombshell. But this is how it's touted, that the FBI FBI, uh, and Democratic Party lawyers got together. Again, lawyers. Remember, these guys are always the party party participants, the lawyers, the attorneys, to, to talk about the allegations of Donald Trump Russian collusion weeks before the 2016 election and before the Bureau secured a search warrant targeting Trump's campaign. And so we can go through and go along all this stuff that's talked about, about how we get involved in in this um, give and take, this he said, she said nonsense. No one really settles down. But what I found interesting in this story, and then you have to understand in context, it's coming at the same time as a, some a law, another lawyer is being uh, l- reviewed to, re- to be confirmed to become a Supreme Court justice that's going to make decisions in this land. And this is all coming at the same time that it's found out that this guy Kavanaugh was an author, if not well, if not an author, a promoter or an overseer of the Patriot Act. And that's when I started looking at when I found that out. I started researching, and it was and there was other things that were the truth that were no good. It first came out as being a he became sympathetic of the Fourth Amendment, the government position of the Fourth Amendment. Although he did make one decision in a GPS case, which I found out perfectly fine for the property standpoint. The others were not so much. He prefers uh, government intrusion uh, reasonableness. He prefers that to the uh, government uh, to the government over your Fourth Amendment and, and into being Fifth Amendment. So that's what started people looking at this guy. But what really then popped up was that he apparently was uh, instrumental in moving along the Patriot Act. It's way back in 2001, folks. This guy's been on the stage and we, you know, we don't even know it. But what, so this little story about the bombshell, but in collusion, if you will, with the FBI and the Democratic Party. I'm not really interested in that. I saw this, though. It means that the FBI had good reason to suspect the dossier was connected to DNC's main law firm and was the product of a Democratic opposition research effort to defeat Trump, yet failed to disclose that the information to the FISA court, FISA court in October 2016, when the Bureau applied for a FISA warrant to surveil Trump campaign advisor Carter Page. This is a bombshell. Uh, this is a bombshell that unequivocally, show, unequivocally shows the real collusion between the FBI and the Donald Trump opposition, the DNC, Hillary, and Trump-hating British intel officer, 
the hijack the election to hijack the election rather than with some conspiracy between Putin and Trump, a knowledgeable source says, well, I'm going to go back to that FISA court. Let's go back to that FISA court. But this is, I think people have missed this one, too. And I think I said so. I think Gary L. was. He said, uh, some, uh, well, let's see if anyone is hit by the shrapnel of this bombshell. And my response after I saw that the FISA court was uh, hacked by the FBI and I, I, my response is, to, is this. Here's the couple of frags that will miss everyone. It also shows there's no check and balance in the FISA court, the FISA court, to stem fraud on the court. And it appears Kavanaugh's oversight, if not authorship, allowed this abuse. Remember, where the FISA courts were empowered were before that, but were then empowered through the Patriot Act. And I added here, the father of hashtag extrajudicial executive expedience and a bar ass member. The FISA court is a function of the, is a, it's an instrumentality now of the, func of the implementation of the Patriot Act, which Kavanaugh helped create. This is the guy that we were watching the breads and circuses around some porn, sex, bar, whatever, the drug, whatever, that went on for I don't even know how long it was. I wasn't even interested in it. If I'm, I'm, in a way, I'm still not interested, but I wasn't interested at all until I found out this guy was part and parcel to the Patriot Act, which really starts as a precursor to, what, the murder memo and all that? I think I say that in, the, in my uh, Twitters about this. And so the process goes on. The process happens. We watch the breads and circuses. What I consider breads and circuses, I now... It was fine. I believe it's, it was something completely elsewise. It, it got everyone focused. Everyone was, uh, looked at the shiny stuff, the sensational stuff, instead of stepping back and looking at the, the, the substantial things that need to be looked at. Kavanaugh now, we have a Supreme Court justice, like the 114th Supreme Court justice or something like that. Kavanaugh sworn in as associate justice to the Supreme Court. He got in, folks. This guy went through the process and got in. And my question at the time, when I saw that he invented, uh, he invented, helped to invent the, the, the Patriot Act, remember that came in so quick, like a lot of the bills at the time, hardly anybody could read them. They're already written. They're already been worked on. It was who was voting. Even that long ago, there's still these people that are career senators and politicians. Who was back there that voted on the, 20, uh, the U.S. Patriot Act? And I found a lot of names that were still there. I also found uh, that they did, remember, if I remember right now, they did an uh, update on that in 2006. And some people, I think we reported a bit on that, some of the senators in the, in the, didn't agree again now with the re-upping of it. Some didn't. What's interesting, though, is that here's the point. The gentleman that is authoring this patriarch that everybody voted on, what's the likelihood they're going to find against him today? If they still, on the second turnaround in the 2006, agreed then, and it was interesting, the last two people that ended up being the senators that were holdouts didn't, weren't a part of any of either one of those. They were actually sitting there looking at this thing without, without, any, ba without any basis to look. And their, their responses were strictly over the bread and circuses, not whether or that he had really enslaved a nation, as I also observed in my Twitter. And so this thing is set up. This guy's been in the in the pipeline for a long time. This, when you look at what this guy did, he was a, a dissenting justice on an appellate court for a, a, a quite a number of cases. A dissenting judge. In other words, he lost his his position lost, but he would advance a particular new view that, interestingly, was picked up on appeal to the Supreme Court. If you can understand how hard it is to get into the Supreme Court, why, another thing I don't think is such a big deal for most people, the peons don't get in. On, the, on, on appeal to the Supreme Court, which did get into the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court picked up his dissent and unique position and found in favor of it. This guy's like in the can, folks. Long before we saw him come. And so, I don't know what the purpose is behind all the breads and circuses. I guess it's not to be able to look at the substantial things, but everybody bought the breads and circuses. Hook, line, and sinker. Hook, line, and sinker. I was not interested in as much then as I really am now about how the dynamic of our 
stupidness is in, as a people. And so I have some observations. I'll just cast, uh, send them out here to you. They're on my Twitter uh, line, whatever you call that thing, uh, the feed. But they are my observations at the time that I think people need to be aware of what's happening, what's happened. The Patriot Act, I, I say in one Twitter in response to uh, someone who objected uh, to somebody using, it was Leahy, produced an email that Kavanaugh was speaking about the Patriot Act. And the objection to that, as stating, uh, was that the email re, the email said said Kavanaugh said in the email that he was only speaking about non-citizens being impacted, and so that was his objection to what Leahy had produced. And Leahy was, I think, as a Democrat who was against it. But here again, they're not looking at the right stuff. They're not promoting the right stuff, and this guy squeaks in and becomes an, a Supreme Court. The Supreme Court Justice, and my response to the guy bringing up the, uh, the comment about that non-citizens were what he was talking about, not impl implicitly, not everyone then would be subject, is my comment to that is the Patriot Act hasn't just affected non-citizens. It wasn't written that way either. This seems to be, to have, excuse me, this seems to have been one of the distractions between drafting and intended implementation, removing that distinction. And I'd like to remind you, I think it's Section 326. That's where all you all had to do, had to re-go down and redo your bank accounts. You had to have special IDs, not real ID quite yet, but special. You had to have special proofs now in order to have a bank account. Now, if it was only affecting uh, non-citizens, why did you all have to go down and do that? Unless maybe you're all considered a non-citizen. Maybe you're all considered a, an enemy combatant. Maybe, maybe your in, presumed innocence got disappeared way back when. That someone says that the email that Kavanaugh said specialized in non-citizens, I'm saying that was probably the distraction because by the time the Patriot Act comes out, all everybody gets affected by this Patriot Act. And no one said anything about that. All right, so let's, let's kind of put this in context. And I, I want to, I'm make, making these observations because it certainly uh, works on our options on what we do here given you want to do something on how we go what we do going forward first of all our odds are getting the Supreme Court are real slim anyway given that's the case we have to try and avoid that that potential even though that may be a, a hail Mary pass 10 percent you might get in who knows because it's sitting there we try to figure it out but we now have to look at who's sitting there and what our case might be. In other words, if I can invent something at this point, if this guy believes, uh, was the author or promoter or helper or overseer of the Patriot Act, and you walk in and try to fight the TSA, what's the odds of you getting his vote? We're look, you know, so, so we're looking at a, a very real uh, dynamic here that I don't necessarily believe is, is any good, and we won't know until, uh, until we start to see this guy function. But uh, my observation to somebody making a comment, uh, Senator narrowly advances, the Senate narrowly advances Kavanaugh's nomination, the final vote right before he got uh, nominated was because there was a question whether or not, you know, they give you the drama, uh, will he or won't he, will the, will the senators vote, will these ones that are hanging out, what, you know, are they going to continue to hang out? Uh, well, that was answered pretty quickly, almost faster than I got out this Twitter, but uh, this Twitter comment, but I said, does anyone seriously think that the government funding real ID, an indefinite detention, the murder memo, and the open-air American America prison, a.k.a. the war of terror, would not support a prime advocate, if not author, of the occupying oppression. This thing was in the bag, folks, from what I can tell, and they had to move the breads and circuses and so that you wouldn't be uh, looking at the more, uh, you wouldn't be interested or even know to focus or force people to focus on what was really truly important, the continuation of what we're of the of, of massive oppression and the, what I consider to be the war of terror against us, the people. Would, do you think that the people that supported all those things would not support the guy that actually helped to implement them? It seems to be pretty square up. So when Gary came back and said, P. T. Barnum, once we started to see, I guess there's a group of us that started to see this is a how this was coming put together, that the, the breads and circuses were actually covering this other con real serious uh, awareness. Uh, Gary Law comes, uh, comes out to say uh, in his Twitter, P.T. Barnum would have been proud. 
And I just couldn't agree with more than that. That's, uh, I said, oh man, you said it. What a psyop. These people are brilliant. If you start to understand what you witnessed was a setup, and you start to bore down into how that was done, and the, and the, and the complexity of it, and how it was executed, you'll see what we're up against. You'll see the type of things that uh, we have to deal with as a people. You look, we talk about deep state. It was working right in the front. It was working on the cameras right in front of you. There's nothing covert about it. What's covert is your understanding of how it works, how they pull this stuff together. And that reminded me of a little graphic I may throw up here. Not quite exactly this point, but it's a very similar a little cartoon. And it's the king on a parapet with his advisor looking down over the over a rioting mass in the in the in the, in the, in the field. And the advisor tells the king, oh, uh, you don't need to fight them. You just need to convince the pitchfork people that the torch people want to take away their pitchforks. And that's pretty much what goes on. That's a dynamic that goes on that gets you to buy into something they're focusing on, whether it was the Magas and all the other people. Oh, you get, confirm Kavanaugh he, and then, then fighting the, the, the sexual drunken party, uh, I'm a teenager attitude. Versus those that were, I believe in the victims. There you go. Just, just think that one group's going to take something dear to the other, and they'll fight. They'll look at each other and tear each other's eyes out. And what goes on beyond that, no one knows because they're too busy fighting each other. And some woman pops out in the through. I think it was Paul Joseph Watson on the on the on the uh, on this. Uh, this topic of uh, in Twitter, uh, talking about a woman named Emily Radikowski, who apparently was one of the people that was protesting the Supreme Court nomination of Kavanaugh, a man who has been accused by multiple women of, of sexual assault. Men who hurt women, women cannot, can no longer be placed, was her post, and Paul Joseph Watton and Swatson responds, and I don't Followed Joseph Watt. This came through another someone else who I do follow. I wouldn't even know these people if it wasn't for who I follow. And it's only a few of those because Twitter won't let me follow anybody. So I'm done with where, and I don't get seem to get too many people wanting to listen. So I I, I do what I have, and that's it. But uh, he says that you literally asked to be arrested, was gently issued with a sp special wristband, and politely escorted out. Stop pretending to be Che Guevara, you utter clown. Was her response. My response to all that was, did I miss something? Am I, understand, am I to understand that M. Rada objects solely based on alleged abuse of women? Remember, this is all just allegations, partly why it was bred in circuses. Right? But based on alleged abuse of women, when it appears we're looking at someone who helped author a law precursor to the murder memo, preparing the way for the abuse of everyone through executive, extrajudicial executive expedience. This is my response to that, like that joke about, you know, just get the torch people to, fig, to, to feel that you're going to pitchfork people want to take their torches. Everybody gets into the minutia of irrelevant points and doesn't step back and look at the dynamic that they're now going to be living under because they failed to do so. And there was another story that came out. 24 arrested. This is all through Twitter here. I'm just going through my, my thing because it all came together at this time. Uh, that people, I think, miss the, can miss, miss certain important connections that would tell them or allow, tell them information or would allow them to understand how to respond to it. 24 arrested for duping Microsoft customers from fake call centers. This all comes in. 24 people, 24 were arrested. Right? There's accountability, at least to that point, for duping Microsoft customers from fake call centers. I'll remind you of the breads and circuses we saw with the Kavanaugh. And I wanted, I asked on, the, on that position, on that post, I, I responded, how many are going to be arrested for, the duping, for duping the American people with breads and circuses being witnessed masquerading as confirmation hearings as a cover to slip into a Supreme Court position an author of their open enslavement? Me too, hold my beer, USA, 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 woke the dupables. We're such a dupable group of people that they were able to slip this bias 
And you allowed by your focus or your inaction, your the ability of somebody to step in who actually authored or helped to author the open enslavement of an entire nation. Now, I don't know how that, how uh, the, uh, the frat parties and the women that uh, weren't uh, chaste enough to stay away repeatedly is more important than uh, that. That we're, uh, we're really handing, uh, handing it all to them, folks. And then a uh, funny libertarian made a post. Lost in all the hysteria is the fact that Kavanaugh, people started to see it, folks, after the fact. Lost in all the hysteria of the fact Kavanaugh will be a, sup a terrible Supreme Court justice when it comes to privacy. Homeboy helped write the Patriot Act. My response to that, to that was, that's not funny. Funny libertarian, that's not funny. But peoples be played good, wasn't they? The dupables. I've talked about this before. We're just a dupable bunch of people. And we continue to choose to be dupable. A lot of the blame is definitely in our camp. We're pointing our fingers, I tell you, we've got three pointing back. Another observation here from Richard Grove. And I, as I saw, see his stuff, I mean, sounds like an intelligent guy. I don't know anything too much about these people. They have a bunch of, it's like a clique of people that they all refer to each other about. Uh, you know, finding memes more important, and really not misinterpreted memes in some instances, more important than uh, certain other things. has really been kind of an interesting re view for myself, uh, looking at these guys. Respected as they are, I suppose. Like I said, I don't know much about them. I don't I, I'm confused by a lot of the social media somehow. I got, really don't have a time to really focus on it anyway. But just what things I do to pick up to try and keep track. Richard Grove uh, says, double Democratic mistakes, one, not nominating Hillary, and two, letting her steal from Bernie. See, to me, that's all just political focus. I, I don't know, he looks at history and then politically focuses, and this, I guess we could focus on that, but that's not going to, to me, that's like vote harder. Doesn't address anything. But he made a comment uh, where he added one more, uh, two more, but one was opposing Kavanaugh, not on the merits of his record, and then said uh, that the Democrats lost. And I responded with repeating, opposing Kavanaugh, not on merits of his record. We all lost, folks. Again, we get partisan in our views, and we're going to miss the fact that we're all losing. We're all losing right in front of our own witness. We're all losing. We get we get focused on the, imp the incorrect things we get we allow ourselves to. We might get into the sensationalism. Oh, we love that porn. We love those drugs. We love that inner. Oh, we love that embarrassment. We love to see the dirty laundry. <laughs> and what's hanging, what's traveling behind all that hanging dirty laundry is it, it is missed by everybody. And I guess this is just again this object lesson of how easily we're led astray, we're led into inaction. A misaction, non-action, whatever, mis malaction, and it it really it really takes uh, stepping back and it's not looking and not being not being engaged. It's actually engaging with it a different way. Though you have to take a step back to be able to engage really the the scene that you're actually watching and understand this whole thing is just this again a spaghetti western trying to cover for apparently it's just con it's just a prolific and a constant crime. And a part of that is because the accountability was re removed somewhere. And we never we never really insisted on it. And we'll make excuses to, instead of insisting on it. And so, we're, and we've learned, and in the process, we learned not to do that. And we forgot, if you will, if we never learned, if we learned and knew it before, we've forgotten, but we're not taught if we didn't. And we don't pursue how. And partly why I said the Wayne, Wayne Hage's video, he took all the time you know, he took to learn how to do that, and he's now seeing at the end when he stripped, I told you, as he stripped of nothing, he now has all the power. And he's seeing that. It took all these years for that to come out. It's an abomination that he had to had go through that. But he's he's figuring stuff out. He's figuring out how wrong we all are as a society, yet the, the rightness is sitting right there for us to claim. And I guess do we choose that better for us is 
whether or not we actually actively strive for it and attain it. And I keep telling you, as long as there's just a few people doing it, it's just going to take a lot longer. And it'll take what it takes for those people. Well, like I said, we got little things going on. We've got another advancement of what we're doing going on within a, within a, uh, a county. Uh, we had another county, I just got word, another county took notice of it. So the little pebble went in a pond, and some people took notice of the tidal wave that's beginning to form that's coming at them. Right? So I don't know what to say. It just takes a little while. It takes, a, it takes an integration with the system again to start. Essentially, you're sitting, you, be, you grab the reins. You have to take the reins in a way that uh, is invisible, yet you take the reins and you start to function. You start driving the, the horses the way they're supposed to be driven, not let them be driven by someone else or not at all. And so, again, along this outlines of we're being driven by the masters of, masters of the universe, if you will. Our universe is being dictated by them. This guy's going to be a Supreme Court justice. Uh, don't know how it's going to relate to much of anything at this point uh, relative to what at least I'm interested in. As I said, one thing he did as far as property was concerned is trespassed. He found, for my sake, in my view, he took the right answer on that one. And it wasn't a common thought. That was another scary part. He, that, that was a unique imposition that he dissented to, but the Supreme Court eventually picked up and agreed with him on that all the other justices didn't, which means your courts all have the wrong idea. And I say wrong in this regard, that when you look at the sanctity of the property, as I understand and I talk to you about, that observation by him in this one instance was accurate and the Supreme Court picking it up and luckily they could get that case in for the Supreme Court to decide came up with the very same answer which prospected the property that all the other justices did not actually is the real problem here that I keep talking to you about and this is I think what Wayne Hage has found out as well but it got so bad that they even the system got embarrassed and I told you I explained that uh, behind which you hear one of the weeks we were talking about that. So we have this occupation of this. And this, again, I can we can characterize it at lots of different ones, different levels. Depends on, on what, what facts you bring and what you want to look at. But this brings up another thing of looking at the inside of how this thing works to figure out that we're in an occupied state. There was an occupation over the top of us. We haven't figured it out. And there might be a couple types. We haven't figured that out. Oh, well, today, we impliedly, we're dealing with the two types. So one is a military type, and another one is through the Bar Association, which could be its its agent. We, w we wouldn't know. But, but it, we some of you that uh, are, are tied in uh, got an interesting little commander-in-chief notice here this week. And what can I say about that? There's lots of discussion about how that violated people. I, thought, I think it's kind of funny. And telling uh, the government not to get in my phone when, folks, that's the tool. I keep telling you, these phones are the tool. And so the pres a presidential uh, alert came through, FEMA. Get Remember, folks, Kavanaugh helped to create all this. He's, he's now going to be the view, one of the seats of decision. That everybody, whether you agree with it or not, everybody who thinks they're authorita will be agreeing with this guy once his vote is up with the other, well, with the majority, given there is one. But, uh, there was a little story here that came out, and uh, I don't know why this guy is referred to a lot. I, I mean, he made a lot of money. He's, a, he's known in the, in the electronic and the software field, McAfee. I'm not so sure about the guy. Seems like a big player to me. And he plays a lot. That's fine. He can play in all his life. But he seems to be a player. But he's resp people respond to him, I suppose. He's one of the guys that people take notice of. But he came out after that, the, uh, the Trump alert, and he uh, made a comment about it. And the people who write this article took a big uh, notice. But it, interestingly, they called his view dystopian instead of reality, which caught my attention. I mean, I could care less about John McAfee's position on this presidential alert or that you all got your messages that have the phones, and that's not a story to me. In a way, it's just FEMA implementing their national, the, what was the National uh, Emergency Broadcast System, right? Only they went through, a, this test was through a, another refined, what, Wi-Fi system. It's all integrated. But John McAfee came out, and this uh, 
this article, this uh, Lou Rockwell decided it was dystopian. What uh, Jeff McAfee, I guess, uh, this the seer of all of all of all things software now, and what this means, uh, made this comment: uh, the presidential alerts. They are capable of accessing the E911 chip in your phones, giving them full access to your location, microphone, camera, and every function on your phone. This is not a rant. This is from me, still one of the leading cyber uh, cybersecurity experts. Wake up, people. John McAfee. So it takes John McAfee to explain exactly what's in the phone. That's already going on, folks. It didn't take the presidential alert. It's already been there. It doesn't start the time uh, at the time of the of the presidential alert. He doesn't tell you that. He tells you he's a security expert. The Lou Ockwell article states that they believe that his statement was an opinion, and that's what caught my attention too. And so I, I tweeted out this statement. Opinion, so much drama in denial. Track and trace and more was enabled when you bought your newfangled smartphone. If you got a message tug, congratulations. Your leash is firmly affixed. It has been. Self-inflicted wound. Is that an opinion that I just said, folks? Against his opinion? Folks, this has been in the technology. This is the silent weapons for quiet wars I've been talking to you about for years. It's everything y'all that are uh, informed know about. John McAfee doesn't have the dystopian view that's re that should be any kind of a cyber expert here. Matter of fact, this is hardware. And it's already been planned into your life. And and you 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 put you put that leash around you when you set up your account when you bought that phone that has that capacity. And I don't know if uh, I suppose there's phones without the capacity. But you might want to look at those. But this was a another point that people make another thing about. Uh, people get notoriety, but the, to me the wrong messages get sent. And uh, the message that needed to be sent was, if you don't want that alert, don't have a phone that accepts it. Get out of that uh, silent weapons for quiet wars slot they have for you. You plugged yourself in. Quit blaming others. If you don't want the government sending you the message, don't have the, re the tool that can receive it. This is, like, if, I, if you haven't heard, this is how the government gets jurisdiction over everybody. You're just here. I don't consent, but you're just here, and that's how they've done it. Now what do you do about that? But I haven't consented. You're just here. You can leave. Now think about that one. That's their answer. You can leave. And I said to you before, I went to the mountains when I thought I was leaving, and they followed me. Then I found out the globe wasn't flat, folks. It's round. I can't escape. I'm stuck here. I better turn back and do something to stop these people from running me down. And surprising me, I better have some control over the timing of this thing. Self-inflicted wound. I don't know what more to say. I keep telling you about this stuff. At some point, you know, it's a presidential alert. Fine, great. That's a great tool. I don't go ask the government, why would you give me this alert? You took away my civil defense centers. You nuclear... Moron bully? What good is it? I mean, nobody even th thinks about that. Okay, I got this alert. Now what am I going to do with it? Except that most thought, I, I, like I think, I think he's, the president, any president will start using it like Twitter, I suppose. All private to him, right? Anyway, doesn't matter. So you are being told by the commander-in-chief about, about an alert on a device that you get, that you pay for. Instead of them paying for it, if that's what they want to give to you, you pay for it. No one steps back and says, I got this thing, all, this thing is just all screwed up here, isn't it? And I'm allowing it every minute and every day. If they want to give me, a, give me an alert, maybe they should pay for the phone. At least, I'd, at least they're paying for, for the servitude I know that I'm getting. I'm not paying for it, at least. 
but no, keep keep on going, keep uh, fretting, keep not having the phone, keep whatever. This stuff just keeps on you. And why? Why do they have to have such connection? Like I said, it's it's a great tool if if you're in a, a tsunami prone area. Why not have the a, a warning? Why not? But, but why as well? What what is the big mandatoriness of all this? The mandatoriness is the, the spaghetti western you live. In. And I want to address a bit of this. I think I can do this. Uh, the question is whether or not we're really in a martial law or whatever you want to call it, this military consequence. And I told you I referred to this before. Uh, and I said, well, maybe one day we'll read it, and I'll, I'll go through something. And I'll try to show you why we see some of the things, or at least what it appears why. Again, probabilities and possibilities based on the facts, based on the continuing and repeated conditions, based on the fact you look at, why would they do that? And your only answer is, well, it must be I'm under a control. And that control has to have a certain form, and it does have that form. When I put the, all the facts through this uh, filter, this strainer, what comes out is a certain answer. Like I put all these facts through the Lieber code, uh, lots of levers get flicked, and it looks like I'm sitting in a, in a, mili in a martial law. That's uh, been a question for a long time. And in fact, I've had lots of people uh, ask me about this and research it. And we no, I don't know of anybody who's found the real answer. Uh, well, the answer they found is there's no proclamation that exists. That's what they found. But there's no proclamation that didn't really ended the Civil War, which would continue the military consequence from there as one demarcation point. That there's been assumed and presumed that there's been a proclamation ending the period. And I'd never found it. And then about, back in August, someone sent a piece of information that talked about, I think it was Andrew Johnson, making a proclamation that ended the Civil War. And I said, wow, I missed that one. Let's go look. That's very important. Because if that's not it, folks, then we have a couple right after it that could be, and we for sure have the 1917 uh, Trading with the Enemy Act, which was not ended and not repealed, even though they repealed all emergencies at some time after. I can't remember what date, what year that was. It maintained and passed through the repeal of all the declarations of war, uh, notwithstanding the continuance of lots of wars like the War on Drugs and all this other stuff. That the, even if it's not a civil war, then we're looking at the war, the Trading with the Enemy Act, which is a war power. And so it's not over if we can defeat the Civil War martial provision that's continuing. And so this came up, and this was really intriguing to me. And uh, this is Proclamation 157. To end the Civil War, you had to have a proclamation. Haven't found anything. This one came up as being the thing that did that, at least by the... Re the the Twitter poster's opinion. And I'm good with that. I'll go with what he saw. He'd been researching it. He thought this was it. It was recalling a day in history. I missed it. Let's go look for it. So let's read this. I want you to see how this uh, really starts to work. At least uh, if I believe the eyes I have to see are true. And I also put things in categories and possibilities and then ask the question, with these categories of possibilities and probabilities, what am I looking at? with those as buffers. In other words, nothing is necessarily set in stone because we really just don't know. But we're on continuing investigation to try and find out. And yet we still have to function within this the thing, whatever it is that, they, that allows this nonsense. Trying to figure this thing out. Trying to find out what, what happened. Where are we going to go with it? What's coming against us? Is there an opportunity to stop? I don't know. We've got to ask the question. We've got to find the facts. Well, this proclamation comes up, and it would fit. It would fit, given that it's uh, what it what it's purported to do. Proclamation ending the Civil War. It, it would uh, say that, wouldn't it? What I wanted, Drew, is I want to show you how to read some of this to start having a different way to look at how. I don't know about a different way. It's how you look at things, but you have to have a more comprehensive understanding and apply it as you read. Uh, let me offer to you ahead of time, and I don't know if I'm going to. Uh, throw the, uh, or pull the joke here on, on the end before I get to it. I want you to listen very carefully. There's a, let me say it this way. Uh, when we have the, all the states of the, of the, uh, the states of the United States is, is typically understood to be what as a body of a body of the several states is called what? Uh, anybody? No, I'm not going to get a feedback. I'll, I'll give it to you here. 
it's typically understood to be the United States of America, right? Now, the United States of America is all of the landmass. What is then the United States? And we'll look very carefully. We'll find out the United States is a government, a government that's situated in a place that's not a state. It's in a district, and it's a organization, and none of which are the United States of America. And so I, I want you to consider, as I read through this, and I want you to really hold to your mind and how when we're talking about the particularities, you have to keep them particular and stop throwing in anything you thought was an opinion and look strictly at what's being said to, to where it would have to be said and how it would have to be said. And we're, we'll read this proclamation to see, did, in fact, they end the Civil War? Or something else? And just to let you know as I read through this, and I'm, I focused on the term United States of America and the term United States and that they're different. Because by the time I'm through halfway through this uh, article, I'm asking, they keep referencing one, and I'm asking where's the other? My mind kept saying, well, well, right there you should have said the other, and you didn't. And so you have to hold very carefully what you, as you, as I read this, you have to hold the thought of exactly who or what they're, they're talking about or, or, or referencing or is, or is speaking or the authority from that particular place. You have to understand there cannot be one law over all the United States of America. if they are a state countries in union. But if there is one, then you're not talking about those separate several states, are you? And so you have to kind of think a little bit with this. I'm going to read it through. I should be able to read through it before the end of the broadcast. But I want to see if this is the proclamation. I'm looking to see, is this the proclamation uh, ending the Civil War? Because if it does, then we move the calendar up a whole lot of time over the over when we weren't underneath an occupation under the United States. Declaring that peace, order, tranquility, and civil authority now exists in and throughout the whole of the United States of America by the President of the United States of America. A proclamation. Whereas, by proclamations on the, of the 15th and 19th of April, 1861, the President of the United States, in virtue of the power vested in him by the Constitution and the laws, declared that the laws of the United States were opposed and the execution thereof obstructed in the states of South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Florida, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Texas by combinations too powerful to be suppressed by the ordinary course of judicial proceedings or by the powers vested in the marshals by law, and whereas by other, another proclamation made of the 16th day of August in the same year, in pursuance of an act of Congress approved July 13, 1861, the inhabitants of the states of Georgia, South Carolina, Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee, Alabama, Louisiana, Texas, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Florida, except the inhabitants of that part of the state of Virginia lying west of the Allegheny Mountains, and except also the inhabitants of such other states of that state and the other states before named as might maintain a loyal adhesion to the Union and the Constitution, or might be from time to time occupied and controlled occupied and controlled by the forces of the United States, engaged in the dispersion of insurgents, were declared to be in a state of insurrection against the United States. And, whereas by another proclamation of the first day of July 1862, issued in pursuance of an act of Congress approved June 7th in the same year, the insurrection was declared to be still existing in the state aforesaid, with the exception of certain specific counties in the state of Virginia, and, whereas, by another proclamation, made on the second day of April, 1863, in pursuance of the Act of Congress of July 13, 1861, the exceptions named in the proclamation on August 16, 1861, were revoked 
and the inhabitants of the state of Georgia and South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, Alabama, Louisiana, Texas, Arkansas, Mississippi, Florida, and Virginia, except the 48 counties of Virginia designated as West Virginia and the ports of New Orleans, Key West, Port Royal, and Beaufort in North Carolina, were declared to still be in states of insurrection against the United States. And, whereas by another proclamation on the 15th day of September, 1863, made in pursuance of the Act of Congress approved March 3, 1863, the rebellion was declared to be still existing and the privilege of writ of habeas corpus was in certain specified cases suspended throughout the United States, said suspension to continue throughout the duration of the rebellion or until said proclamation should, by a subsequent one to be issued by the President of the United States, be modified or revoked and whereas the House of Representatives on the uh, 22nd day of July 1861 adopted a resolution in the words following, namely, resolved by the House of Representatives of the Congress of the United States that the present deplorable civil war has been forced upon the country by disunionists of the southern states now in revolt against the constitutional government and in arms around the capital that in this national emergency, Congress, banishing all feelings of mere passion and or resentment, will recollect only its duty to the whole country that this war is not waged upon or part in any spirit of oppression, nor for any purpose of conquest or subjugation, nor purpose of overthrowing or interfering with the rights of established institutions of those states, but to defend and maintain the supremacy of the Constitution and to preserve the Union, with all the dignity equality, and rights of the several states unimpaired. And that, as soon as these objects are accomplished, the war ought to cease. Where And whereas the Senate of the United States on the 20th day of, 18, of, of the day of July 1861 adopted the resolution to the word the following to wit, resolved that the present deplorable civil war has been forced upon the country by the disunionists of the southern states now in revolt against the constitutional government and in arms around the Capitol, that in this national emergency, Congress, banishing all feeling of mere passion and resentment, will recollect only its duty to the whole country, that this war is not prosecuted upon our part in any spirit of oppression, nor for any purpose of conquest or subjugation, nor purpose of overthrowing or interfering with the rights and established institutions of those states, but to defend and maintain the supremacy of the Constitution and all laws made in pursuance thereof to preserve the Union with all dignity, equality, and rights of the several states unimpaired, that as soon as these objects are accomplished, the war ought to cease. And whereas these resolutions, though not joint or concurrent in form, are substantially identical, and as such have hereto been and yet are regarded as expressing the sense of Congress upon the subject to which they relate, and whereas the President of the United States, by proclamation of the 13th of June, 1865, declared that the insurrection in the state of Tennessee had been suppressed, and that the authority of the United States therein was undisputed, and that such United States officers as had been duly commissioned were in the undisturbed exercise of their official functions, and whereas the President of the United States, by further proclamation issued on the day, second day of April 1866, did promulgate and declare that there no longer existed any army resistance of misguided citizens or others to the authority of the United States in or in all the states before mentioned, excepting only the state of Texas, and did further promulgate the dec and declare that the laws could be sustained and enforced in several states before mentioned, except Texas, by the proper civil authorities, state or federal, and that the people of said state, except Texas, are well and loyally disposed and have conformed or will conform in their legislation to the condition of affairs growing out of the amendment of the Constitution of the United States prohibiting slavery within the limits and jurisdiction of the United States, 
and did further declare in the same proclamation that it is the manifest determination of the American people that no state of its own will has a right or power to go out or separate itself from or be separated from the American Union, and that, therefore, each state ought to remain and constitute an integral part of the United States, and did further declare in the same last-mentioned proclamation that several aforementioned states, excepting Texas, had in manner offer said given satisfactory evidence that they acquiesce in this sovereign and important resolution of national unity. Whereas the President of the United States, in the same proclamation, did further declare that it is believed to be a fundamental principle of government that the people who have revolted and who have been overcome and subdued must either be dealt with so as to induce them voluntarily to become friends, or else they must be held by absolute military power as devastated so as to prevent them from ever again doing harm as enemies, which last name policy is abhorrent to humanity and to freedom. And, whereas the President did in the same proclamation further declare the Constitution of the United States provides for const constituent communities only as states and not as territories, dependencies, or provinces, provinces or protectorates, and further that such constitute states must necessarily be and by the Constitution and laws of the United States are made equals and placed upon a like footing as to political rights, immunities, dignity, and power with the several states with which they are united, and did further declare that the observance of political equality as a principle and right of justice is well calculated to encourage the people of the before-named states, except Texas, to be and to become more and more constant and preserving in their renewed allegiance, and whereas the President did further declare the standing armies, military occupation, military law, military tribunals, and the suspension of the writ of habeas corpus are in time of peace dangerous to public liberty, incompatible with the individual rights of the citizen, contrary to the genius and spirit of our free institutions, and exhaustive of the national resources, and ought not, therefore, be sanctioned or allowed except in cases of actual necessity for re rebellion, invasion, and suppression, insurrec suppressing insurrection or rebellion. And the President did further in the same proclamation declare that the policy of the government of the United States, from the beginning of the insurrection to its overthrow and final suppression, had been conducted in conformity with the principles in the last named proclamation cited, and whereas the President is in the said proclamation of the 13th June 1865, upon the grounds therein stated and herein before recited, did then and thereby proclaim and declare that the insurrection which heretofore existed in the several states before named, except Texas, was at, at an end and had henceforth uh, to be so regarded, and whereas, subsequently to the said second day of April 1866, the insurrection in the state of Texas has been completely and everywhere suppressed and ended, and the authority of the United States has been successfully and completely established in the said state of Texas, and now remains therein unresisted and undisputed, and such of the proper United States officers have been duly commissioned within the limits of said state, are now in the undisturbed exercise of their official functions, and whereas the, the uh, laws can now be sustained and enforced in the said state of Texas by the proper civil authority, state or federal. And the people of the said state of Texas, like the people of the other states before named, are well and loyally disposed and have conformed or will conform in their legislation to the condition of affairs growing out of the amendment of the Constitution of the United States prohibiting slavery within the limits and jurisdiction of the United States, and whereas all the reasons and conclusions set forth in regard to the several states therein specially named now apply equally and all, in all respects to the state of Texas as well as to the other states 
which have been involved in insurrection. And, whereas the adequate provision has been made by military orders to enforce the execution of acts of Congress, aid the civil authorities, and secure obedience to the Constitution and laws of the United States within the state of Texas, if a resort to military force for such purpose should at any time become necessary. Now, therefore, I, Andrew Johnson, President of the United States, do hereby proclaim and declare that the insurrection which heretofore existed in the state of Texas is at an end and is to be henceforth so regarded in that state as in other states before named in which the said insurrection was proclaimed to be at an end by aforesaid proclamation of second day of April 1866. And I do further proclaim that said insurrection is at an end and that peace, order, tranquility, and civil authority now exists and throughout the whole of the United States of America. In testimony whereof I have hereto set my hand and caused the seal of the United States to be affixed, done at the city of Washington this 20th day of August, A.D. 1866, and the independence of the United States of America, the 91st, Andrew Johnson, by the President, William H. Seward, Secretary of State. That's the document. I hope you all didn't turn away. I hope you all that listened heard it. Did you, did you hear... Did you hear that they proclaimed an end to the Civil War? I didn't hear it. Did you hear that the United States officers were installed in a state? Did you hear at the end in the state of Texas, the military, as in other states, would have the military sitting by, waiting, to make sure they quell all, all the insurrection? But the civil authorities are commissioned through the United States. They're not talking about the United States of America till the very end. But the entirety of the of the of the continent, the nation, is underneath the laws of the United States in the states equally. In my mind, to my way of thought, and this, I guess we could have a discussion to work through this as well. But as I've been rereading this and looking at it and reanalyzing and understanding how these words seem to work and try to put them together. I don't hear a proclamation ending the Civil War. I hear the institution of a military control equally in all states, the United States officers of which are in control. Now, there could be lots of discussion about how we go through collateral information to prove it. Another one thing that comes to mind, the franchise of, of voting, which you don't elect the president, you only vote, is conditioned on a residency in as a citizen of the United States underneath the United States law in the state. Remember here, as we kept, if we kept separate, if you kept separate, the United States of America was different here than the United States. And you start listening that there could not be one overarching law over the nation of separate states in union. You heard the destruction of the union in this proclamation. Does not sound to me like a proclamation ending the the occupation. You notice the word occupation never was. They said oppression, not occupation. When we start to uh, look at this a little, to my mind, a little closer, I think we and dis make distinctions and keep the, the terms in their proper place. I I'm not, well, anybody that thinks they heard it, I'd like to know exactly where you heard it. They claim to have lifted martial law, but then they tell you that the military sitting in the states with all the officials that were all federal, in. Remember, now we said state or federal. I'm going to suggest to you, you go look this up for yourself. Look at the word or. Or is uh, understood, unless it's said uh, neither, uh, to be and. There's a lot of discussion on this. This is how they also obfuscated some of this stuff, too. Or means and. State and federal. How do you have a separateness if you have them together, conjoined? I'll also offer to you, whenever I've noticed, and to keep out, I keep a thought out, whenever I see the word or, without a comma or without a, an, an either, a neither and a nor, uh, to differentiate the conjunctive with the separate, that the or is a redefinition of the first word for the second. In other words, state or federal, I mean, you just replace the word state with federal. 
And those are capitalized letters, uh, capitalized S and F as well. Those are nouns. We don't know what that might be except to kind of analyze through there. Again, two observations. The word or is a conjoining point. If you're separate, you can't conjoin the two authorities. And in both cases, uh, they mean the same thing to mean the or is a definition change. That the first word before the or means the second word shows you this is a federal authority in the states, just like it said that the United States officers were in the states. And who can deny that when you they claimed over and over in this document that they didn't intend to overthrow the state authority? But what happened to the southern states, the reconstitution of their governments, the reconstruction? Excuse me. So I think taken in context. Though it was promoted as a proclamation ending the Civil War, I cannot believe that this is. Why didn't they just come out as, the, as they say, uh, the pro we, I proclaim the end of the Civil War? And so, this was a long-winded way to show, I think, an obfuscation. I am not convinced the Civil War was over. For my possi possibilities and probabilities, I'm con I am continuing to believe we're in a military martial state Again, Libra Code in 1863, remember those dates, had lots of 1861s, but a couple 1863s pop up. 1863 is when Francis Libra made the Libra Code, what now becomes the law of war, which is adopted in 1907 and 14, I think, in the Hague Convention. Understand that at the time they talked about the writ of habeas corpus, uh, they said throughout the United States, I was looking at this distinction, is it the United States of America or the United States? A limited place or a limited cover of a th military authority. How can you have a Union army if, the U if there was no actual Union of states that way? It was strictly in the, in the observation of the Union by compact by the Constitution. You couldn't have a Union army unless it was a Union army of the United States Union foisted on people, the habeas corpus extension of which didn't actually go to the United States of America, but it was within the United States. Why, then, did Andrew, um, excuse me, it was uh, Davis, Jefferson Davis, why in 1864 does he issue, and, and repeatedly they issued habeas, suspensions of habeas corpus in, this, in the Confederate Army, if it was the United States, was a totality of the continent called the United States of America. Lots of questions I suppose we could go on, but I, for my purposes, I tend to believe, I don't see a proclamation ending the period of the war. I think it is actually a statement of continuance. We see evidence that it looks like it's, a, again, a federal authority, and then look around. Don't you see that in lots of other places? First of all, take out every, all the money issues, get, get rid of all the money issues, and then look at it. And then I call your attention back to why why you think it takes so much to to get cops to be uh, to to suffer anything, and the and the the, the occupied people agree that it, that this misconduct is not official misconduct, or this conduct is not of uh, criminal conduct, not official con misconduct. We're just a, like one big society of incongruity at some level, at least. But anyway, for the purposes here, I don't see the proclamation. I didn't hear the proclamation into the period. I see evidence that it was continued. I see evidence uh, uh, that it's continued in the states themselves. I see evidence that it's a, a, an entity called the United States. Remember, this says the, the, the President of the United States, not the President of the United States of America. But this, this imposition covers the entirety of the nation. It wasn't just the states he named. And so, uh, for what it's worth, I don't know uh, what people think about that. I don't think what, I don't know if you find any value in it. I, at least for me, uh, with what we do, I, it, it gives me a sense of understanding of what it is we're actually dealing with, why the government officials, government officials have so much latitude to hurt you, is that we are in a military consequence, and I think that proclamation almost settles it for me if I didn't even know the, the before stuff. It, it says right in, the military sits in the background, just like I've been telling you, the Spaghetti Western, and the civil authorities are your federal authorities, sitting right there, installed. Notwithstanding the intent not to uh, interfere, they did anyway. Again, the pledges mean nothing. You know them by their what they do, know them by their deeds, folks. And this this is what they done. The proclamation tells you that right there. And so, is it is it just local? Uh, as I saw another story, probably is it just local that the military uh, was given license to kill y'all? 
Well, no. Court in London told uh, till today M5, M1, MI5 agents are authorized to commit serious crimes on British soil without informing prosecutors under secretive MI5 policy. Now known uh, Pat Finucane, human rights lawyer, was murdered in 1989 by a British Army agent while eating dinner with his family. I don't know if the Army agent was eating dinner and killed them while he walked by or not, but at any rate, uh, here it is, a soldier uh, killing a, a, someone that lives in society, uh, and it's a supposed uh, secret policy, I guess, not so secret now. It's happening in Britain, like I say, it's happening, this is like, you think we got away from the the, the Queen? Not likely. Not likely. It's a global construction. Not just sustainable development here. We had another story come up about the same time. Official uh, Officials claim uh, police drones will revitalize downtown and create a community connection. That made no sense to me at all. Unless you understand that these police forces are the military. What they're trying to do to connect. They connect to you. The community is them. And these drones will allow them to connect to you better. It'll revitalize downtown. Why? Because they get to find you out more and they get to serve you and serve you process. That's what they're protect and serve. Protect themselves and serve you the process that revitalizes their bank accounts, revitalizes their control through drone use. They are the community they're talking about. When you find out they are the community, they are speaking about it begins to make all the sense in the world, doesn't it? it was a post I did to Twitter. Police officials, uh, police officials claim police drones will revitalize downtown and create a community connection. That's just surveillance, folks, to a military who gets the who who, can, who profits from taking you down. Otherwise, what? How would a drone revitalize downtown? Revitalize, folks. Revitalize. And typically, that's stated in its uh, economic terms. Well, this is done too, but when, until you find out that the, they're talking about themselves, uh, that they're going to revitalize their coffers, the control, the structure of the system. The same officials, the same judges in the courts, the civil courts, that the military stands behind that you heard in the proclamation, is, all, is, is still over there. Uh, still functioning right, 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 right in the towns without you noticing. I'm silent here, folks. We just don't understand how people don't see this or give it any weight. And understanding this way has allowed me to proceed a lot more efficiently, at least, in attempting to work in what I do believe is an occupied country. The, the condition of which you're going to have to pay attention to if you want to continue to operate in an occupied country. Now, again, this becoming this world of the presidential alert, the commander-in-chief, right? They tell you he's a commander-in-chief. It only happens when he's in a war funding. Why is he talking to you as a commander-in-chief in your own country? If it's not your, unless it's not your country, it's their country, and you're uh, considered to be an enemy combatant. Oh, well, who wrote that? Didn't that guy Kavanaugh wrote that up, or, or oversaw that? Wow, this, this is pretty, pretty closed circuit. If you can, t if, as far as I can tell. One of the other things that monopolies, monopolies are a closed circuit, and the monopolies of uh, Government can give monopolies to companies, but it's fi we're finding out that companies can give themselves monopolies and uh, make it very hard to avoid a, a situation of control. Remember, the United States makes uh, allows for corporations, and we find out uh, through the bottom line, uh, like the CAFR, that they're all, all all connected in through the back doors, if you will. And we have back doors and monopolies that are created not just by government, but the companies themselves. Moving on to the surveillance part of this, uh, this, this military consequence. Apple's new proprietary software locks will kill independent repair on new MacBook Pros. So here it is. You keep plugging in like you want to, don't want to, don't want a presidential notice. Keep getting the phone. 
You don't want to get surveilled and have a company control your life through its product that they thought you thought you bought. Continue to pay for Mac uh, for Apple uh, products. They now have software that you have to use if you're going to do a repair to your machines in order to uh, make them work. Uh, it'll throw a code uh, if you don't. You'll have to be going control your leash to the corporation who is is now being told telling us they're working to make their product surveil you even if you don't if you say no this is also happening with the uh, farm companies and the tractors we talked about uh, John Deere was the story I brought broached to you a long long time ago uh, that you can't you can't repair your own stuff now there's some states that are trying to break that that you do get to repair your stuff but Here's how the, the you buy these products and they get, they get you, the, the leash is, is a very tight leash. And that very tight leash, uh, they say they want a proprietary software. And I, we were talking about, well, who owns the, who, who, what's proprietary when you don't have the control of the vulnerabilities in the hardware? Well, we talked all about, I've talked about that. I've pointed a lot of that out. And this, now the report came up. Uh, explosive report details Chinese infiltration of Apple, Amazon, and the CIA. A week ago, President Trump stood at the meeting of the United Nations Security Council and accused China of attempting to tamper with the U.S. elections, mimicking some of the same allegations that had first uh, have been levied against Russia. But we look at this not from that. We'll look at this from the uh, technology. The, the China is making the manufacturing of all of our products. Uh, it isn't a question to the military of the vulnerabilities that the China could in to involve, uh, be, get, involve us with. That brings Apple's proprietary claim into question. If China gets the manufacturing, and the manufacturing can be made such that you can't see what they're doing, uh, they can spy on you. As a, it came out this week, China spy chips are found in hardware using Apple. Amazon Bloomberg says Apple ASW says no way. Well, this was a, 19, a 2005 story that uh, they pointed out this little head of a pencil type chip, very small chip that could communicate. Folks, I'll just let you know that's a prop. Because being in hardware, uh, as a hardware uh, designer, uh, a technician designing uh, state-of-the-art hardware back when, if they wanted to do this, they wouldn't make it a discrete chip. Because they can make the chips, they would build it into the spaces inside the chip. And there's lots of space on a digital chip. Uh, sometimes they build into the future, they make space. Inside the having the manufacturing capacity, you would build your surveillance inside the chip and don't tell anybody. It would, I don't know even know how you'd find that if you didn't even know how to access that part of the chip. If you were the manuf the the purchaser, the buyer of what you thought was your proprietary stuff made by someone else who didn't quite make it quite right. That I think this is a big psyop to tell you this is what's going on, and I want to get us to the digital surveillance future that we're in. Keep plugging yourself into silent weapons. Keep thinking that you're isolated. Keep thinking your your social credit's not hackable, not changeable, uh, that you're going to have a life in the future that's not uh, adjustable like the Chinese model is. Keep being crickets to it, and don't be surprised about what the future starts to look like or for your little ones. Thank you for tuning in today, Grimner. Thank you very much for what you do, uh, folks. And we might have a new uh, broadcast here, Art uh, Underground, hopefully You'll have dampened the walls. It won't be so echoey. He used to call in, I think, at Oracle at uh, Behind the Woodshed. So uh, thank you, Art, for, for stepping up and doing your stuff. I don't know quite when he's coming on. Maybe it'll be right after me today, maybe every week uh, later. But uh, thank you very much for every, all you all that uh, uh, share and pass and mirror the broadcast. And uh, to, uh, do what you do there. And I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature will That's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. Feels like. Son, I 
just open a whole case of warpath. 